In this video, we're going to look at the electrolysis required practical. Right, you will be asked to investigate what happens when aqueous solutions are electrolyzed using inert electrodes. Right, this should be an investigation involving developing a hypothesis. So the practical skill that you will need to look at is the hypothesis writing based on some prior knowledge. Right, you will use a low voltage power supply and a carbon rod anode to pass current through four different salt solutions. You will identify the element formed as a positive and a negative electrode at each case. So, right, just as a bit of an introduction, electrolysis is the process by which elect the ionic substances are broken down into simpler substances using electricity. During electrolysis, metals and gases may form at the electrodes. Ionic substances form when a metal reacts with a non-metal. They contain charged particles called ions. Electrolysis is a process by which ionic substances are decomposed into simpler substances when a current is passed through them as the ions gain a charge. For electrolysis to work, the ions must be free to move. Ions are free to move when an ionic substance is dissolved in water or melted. Positively charged ions move to the negative electrode. They receive electrons and are reduced. Negatively charged ions move to the positive electrode. They lose electrons and are oxidized. So, in this practical, you will be given four different solutions to carry out electrolysis with. Sodium sulfate, sodium chloride, copper chloride, and copper sulfate. Right, the image below shows what ions will form and what ions you need to be thinking about during these four lots of electrolysis. At this point, you might want to pause the video and note these down. Thinking about this, we want to go and write a hypothesis of what we think will happen. So just to remind you, a hypothesis is a proposal intended to explain certain facts and observations. You can then go and test the hypothesis scientifically by carrying out a practical. So at this point, pause the video, go and try and work out what different gases or what might be formed at either the positive or negative electrode for each of the four solutions. Right, now the following set of short videos are going to go and show you how to set up the required practical and we'll take you through the electrolysis of these four different substances. If you want to go and get the table down so you can go and physically write in what you observe at the positive and negative electrode for each substance, feel free. So, to start off with, you need to go and set up your electrolysis. Start off the beaker <clears throat> and your electrolyte. Pour it in. No need to pour it too much. Then make sure that this goes through a ball so your two electrodes don't touch. Now it's really important that they don't touch because you want the electric current to pass through the electrolyte, not just straight through the electrodes. So it's really important to make sure that they're separated. After you've done that, before placing it in, crocodile clips at the end, just clip it in place. A, this will be how you go and connect it to the power pack. Well, B, it stops the electrodes from slipping out. So go, put them in. Right, once they're in, make sure that you go and arrange it so that they don't end up touching. If that means that you need to put a little bit of cell tape or something on there just to hold it in place, you can. <clears throat> or if you need to go and prop it up, right, then go 
plug it into your power pack. Once it's plugged into your power pack, always start on the low voltage, turn it on and slowly turn the voltage up and you should begin to start to see something happening within your electrolyte when the ions start to move around. Okay. First one that we're going to look at is the electrolysis of copper sulfate. So when we go and we turn the electricity on, you should see bubbles of gas forming at one electrode and at the opposite electrode. In a minute, we should see the copper ions moving towards it. Remember, copper is positively charged, so it will move towards the negative electrode. The sulfate ions, however, will go and move towards the positive electrode. So as we go and we leave it on, we should see. So if you see there, you can see bubbles of gas being formed at the positive electrode. And if we go and turn it off, we can start to see where copper is forming at the negative electrode. So next we're going to electrolyze sodium chloride. Right, remember when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, technically we form in brine. Right, when we go and pass current through it, we form positive sodium ions, negative chloride ions, positive hydrogen ions, and negative hydroxide ions. So when we go and we turn it on, we're not going to leave it on for very long because we don't want to make chlorine. You can see that you're making lots of hydrogen at the negative electrode, a little bit of chlorine at the positive electrode, and left in solution, you'll have a reasonable amount of sodium hydroxide where the Na plus ions go and ionically bond with the OH minus ions to go and form the alkali. So next, we're going to look at the electrolysis of sodium sulfate. So we'll go and we turn this on. You can see gas being formed at both the negative and the positive electrode. Right, it's worth bearing in mind that the sodium sulfate is dissolved in water so as well as sodium ions and sulfate ions you're also going to have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions the hydrogen ions will go and move towards the negative electrode which is why you can see lots and lots of bubbles of hydrogen coming off the sulfate ions will go and move towards the positive electrode right where it will go and end up forming sulfur dioxide and we should be left with sodium ions and hydroxide ions in solution which should go and form an alkali solution of sodium hydroxide. Final electrolysis is the electrolysis of copper chloride. Right, remember that you're going to form positive copper ions and negative chloride ions. So when we go and we turn this on, you can see at the positive electrode we're forming chlorine gas and at the negative electrode when we go and we take it out we should go and be able to see that we've gone and we've formed a bit of it fell off into the solution but we've gone and we've formed copper so now that you've gone and you've seen the four experiments, there are a few things that we need to think about in terms of thinking about the hypothesis that you should have come up with at the start, right? So you may be asked, do your results support the hypothesis you've investigated? Do they show any patterns? And when talking about patterns and such forth, you need to remember to go and talk about examples from your actual results. So, in terms 
and stating whether your results support your hypothesis, go and talk about the observations that you made. You can go and talk about what you saw, so the gases that you saw being formed at each electrode, and relate that back. Uh, in terms of any patterns that go support it, if you've turned around and said that hydrogen, for instance, is going to be formed at one electrode, whereas oxygen will be formed at the other, then you might want to go and comment physically on the amount of gas that was being produced. Um, in the terms of this experiment, examples from the results shown patterns, uh, the ones where we're forming copper, so the electrolysis of the copper sulfate and the copper chloride, you may wish to go and comment on the fact that solid copper was formed at the negative electrode and talk about why. Right, I hope this video has helped. Um, feel free, go back, have another watch for it, pause it at any point, and good luck when you eventually come to answer questions about this in your actual exams.